Good evening. The September 11th, 2024 meeting of the Conservation Commission will now come to order. Our first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. We want to bear in mind this is 9-11. Approval of minutes. Do we have minutes available? So we will go right past general new old business. 242-1833, a request for extension for the sewer rehab project on Ipswich, Morningside, and Flagship, North End of a DPW requesting an extension. So this order was issued in January of 2022. Um, Ipswich Road will receive 200, foot, 200 linear feet of uh, replacement PVC sewer pipe, and Morningside will have two sections, 10-foot sections of um, sewer pipe to be repair, repaired in place. Um, work is on flagship drive as well, but that's out of jurisdiction. Um, it was just shown for information purposes. The order expires in January of 2025. Work is about to start in the next couple of weeks. I've had a pre-pre meeting with the contractor and uh, Greg Hockmuth, who will be the erosion control monitor. Um, they're shooting to finish end of October, November, but um, they want to just make sure they have a little breathing room, so they're asking for a one-year extension. So I'd recommend that. Okay. Joe. Who's the contractor? Uh, GVC Construction out of Lunenburg. Yeah. I'll say. No questions. All set. No questions. Sir. Motion. I move that we approve the extension request for 242-1833 um, sewer rehabilitation project. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. IDAs, 224 Chestnut Street. Okay, uh, so this project involves demolition of an existing deck and stairs and rebuilding in the same footprint, but extending the deck footprint by two feet by cantilever. Um, so the new footings will remain in the same general locations uh, that they are now. Uh, additional, an additional set of stairs is proposed along the southern side of the deck against the house. The existing stairs um, are 12 feet from the bank of an intermittent stream, and the existing deck is 19 feet from the stream. Stream channel is surrounded by lawn and rocks, um, as you can see in the photo. Um, there is an existing landscape retaining wall that separates the backyard to the stream from each other. Uh, this house was constructed in 1985 under 242-253, um, and a COC was issued. Um, the existing deck and stairs are visible um, in aerial imagery, imagery dating back as far as 1995, if not earlier, because photos get really grainy uh, before that. Uh, the applicant did submit a waiver because the deck is tex technically within uh, the 25 and 50, but the house was built without the regulations in place, so things are closer. Um, and let's see. So I, I'd recommend, um, well, the commission would have to vote on the waiver, and then I'd recommend closing the hearing and issuing a negative, deter negative number three determination with conditions that require installation of erosion controls, <laughs> bless you, and um, scheduling a pre-construction with a contractor and then scheduling a post-construction inspection um, to verify compliance and then approve removal of erosion controls. Okay. Homeowners here this evening, if you have questions for him. Okay, hold on one second. We're going to go down the commission first. Uh, Joel. Um, so it's rare that you'd hear something like you just read um, in that we're granting a waiver on something that might be an RDA, which ostensibly would almost always mean 
a notice of intent, but because it's an existing house that was compliant with the regs at the time, and the fact that the stairs where the wave is required is actually no closer than the deck that was there, right. the impact is negligible. That's why we would consider such a thing, right? Right. Okay. I'm all set. Yeah, uh, just a question about the stream itself. Um, mm -hmm. I see you have a little bridge across it. Is that yeah. a permanent bridge? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and it looks like there's a lot. There's some disturbance right up to it, and a manicured lawn, the, uh, kind of on the other side the, of it. So yeah, can you to be uh, honest with you? The grass on the right side of that picture is yeah. basically just weeds. <laughs> it's okay. uh, so we get the stream there where the arrow is. That's sort of the, the streamway. And then to the right of that um, is just a, uh, just really just weeds, and then um, there's mulch, and then there's the land on it that's not pictured there. So the uh, the bridge just go cr uh, crosses that yep. uh, stream. Do you mow that the weeds over there? Yes. Yeah, you do. Okay. Do you fertilize it? No, no, no. Just keep it. Uh, Really, it's not even mowed. I have a guy uh, use a weed whacker on it yeah. just to keep yeah. it so it doesn't overgrow and block the stream there. Okay. Um, it looks like it's been landscaped, kind of right up next to the bank of the of the stream, with with the crushed or the the, oh, the keystone the and the and the uh, the little walkway there. Um, I mean, I don't know how long that's been there. Um, but it's been there ever since I moved in. I didn't do it. <laughs> Okay, well, that kind of work, I just want you to know that that kind of work is jurisdictional for this commission. And, um, you know, it's, it could be approvable, it might not be, but um, it, it's, you're required to at least ask, okay, and, and get the guidelines and, um, and see what you got. So uh, that's really all I have. Okay, Chris. Just a question on the deck drawings. I know it was mentioned that there's a two foot cantilever, but these are showing, are not showing that? Um, unless I'm missing something. I think on the, I think on the overhead picture that was taken, it shows that. Yeah, it, it does, but I guess these don't. So I just wanted to uh, uh, I, um, confirm that these would be updated or yeah, I, I gotta be honest. I don't know who did that. Well, I think these were submitted with the building permit. So, I think your co contractor pulled the, per the uh, building he, permit. I, I do not have a copy of that picture right there, okay. so I do not know. Okay. Um, where you got that design? So in this image, this orange. So the red, the red is, I believe, the, the existing, existing deck. And then, and then that, this would be the orange part. And then the part, stairs would be, uh, right. would be the cantilever right. addition. Yeah. yeah. He'd, he'd need to update those if, if that's something. Is, is that something that you? talk to Justine about or when you were on site or about what that the um, the, the cantilever the picture, the cantilever uh, well when we when the inspector um, came out we told her that that's what the plan was so um, that's what she mocked up uh, so I, like I said I didn't have that drawing that you held up I don't that's the first time I've seen that picture yeah I looked that one I don't know who yeah. did that Dex.com. Um, well, if you look at the last sheet, which shows the deck and the footings, the sonotubes, there is a 22 foot one and a quarter overall depth of the deck and house. Then you subtract from it the bump in from the house of eight foot eight and three quarters. If you do that arithmetic, you in fact get the 13 foot 10, which shows that it is in fact over, uh, is not overhanging. So the, the, the dimensions all agree. So it, it doesn't show that the deck is overhanging. 
What I can't tell you is whether that 13 foot three Wrong is there. in the exact same location of where the existing posts are. Right. But the dimensions on the drawings all add up so that there's not an error in the drawings. It may be in the presentation as mm -hmm. to how it overhangs or not. Right. Do, do you know who did that picture? Who drew that? Because that's. Well, I think Which, it's. This, this, these pictures? Yeah. I think it's from the contractor that pulled the, the permit. This is what you guys gave us. Right. Do you know the size of the existing deck? The, ex the existing deck yeah. I know is um, from the house to the end is 12 feet. So we're just looking to make it, I believe, 14 feet. And okay. using the, the extra two feet as it would be the cantilever. So we're not, we're using the same footings, the same uh, blueprint. So we're going to need drawings that reflect that design. Because these don't these show the opposite. Right. Yeah. These show the footings move two feet closer to the screen. Okay, well, whoever did that did it wrong. <laughs> I can tell you that. Well, Matt Norton is your contractor? Is Matt? Uh, he, I, I did, like I said, I didn't even know he, he had, that he was the one that did that. He said that uh, he was on the impression when we talked to uh, All right. What, what do we what do we that, need you know, what do we need him to get that she did that overhead the color picture that was um, what the design is going to be so oh. I don't know why he did that he's under the impression that he's using the same footings the same blueprint we're just doing so the chairman that's what we need what we need is we need a drawing that depicts everything you've just said which I believe okay um, yeah, so we need exactly to know where the di dimension from the back face of the house out to the existing piers are. And I need to see that the proposed framing plan shows those piers and that no closer. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's not an exact replacement because there were five piers proposed and there were only three there to begin with. So there are going to be more piers and maybe de minimis of the overall scheme of things. Right. But, but nonetheless, that extra two feet is, is a, does make a difference. So once we know the dimension from the back face of the house to where the existing piers are and that the drawings that they presented show that those proposed piers are no closer and then shows the overhang of the deck being whatever it is yeah. they're asking for. Okay. Then we have something to, to right. talk about because right now we have documents that disagree. Right. So are they going to move that we continue? Yep. Yeah. We have a motion and a uh, second. Well, I, just, I do have an inquiry before because it never got down this far. Um, are you, so you've got the original deck. If you go back to the diagram, and do you have stairs coming off both sides now under no. the proposal? No, just coming off one side. No. What's that? Oh, right now, right. Oh. Right, so you're getting rid of one side of the stairs, and then you're taking that as um, part of your decking now, right? Because you're not taking that off of... Correct. The, the idea is to knock down the existing yeah. deck, yeah. build that exactly as it is, with the, with the addition of the, the two feet cantilever yep. and a second staircase and a separate on the other stairway side. stairway on the other side. Yeah. Right. right. So so you're getting not just the, the two feet at the end of the deck, you're getting that extra space stairway. from that new stairway that wasn't yeah. there before. All right. So that is something that I might have an issue with. So. Okay. But we don't the, have... The staircase is no. really... My wife asked for it because she's has a hard time moving around and we enjoy going in the backyard and, hang, and right now she's got to walk down the existing staircase walk around that stone yep. up the embankment and it's it's just tough for her so we thought the second staircase would be a little easier for her to just get down to that area that's why we wanted to do that yep yep well maybe give up that space on the well either way we'll, we'll see what you're planning sure so you've got to you've got to come back you we're going to continue we can't go forward with what, what you have here um have have you builder who filled out the building permit application contact Amy and she'll give him a list of what is actually needed here to correct the application okay all right well do I have a motion and a second to continue second okay. any further discussion none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? And that's you continue to the next meeting thank you thank okay, you thanks so I'll talk to your contractor okay okay yeah. thank you bye 1701 Osgood Street, extra space properties. Alrighty. Okay. Um, 
So this project involves installation of a utility pole and associated concrete and case conduits with electrical cables. Um, the site does not contain wetlands, but uh, the buffer zone to a wetland located across Osgood Street projects onto the site. Work will be eight, ab approximately 88 feet from the wetland um, at its closest point, and silt, silt sacks will be employed during, during the work for catch basins. Trenching will, looks like to be uh, within paved access drive and perhaps just off the shoulder. Um, and I do have an updated plan here that has all the notations. Uh, Maureen Harold is here this evening representing the project. If you have any questions for her, Within the buffer zone? Yes, there's silt sacks proposed within the catch basins on Osgood Street. Uh, the wetland itself is across the street, yep. down gradient. Silt sacks. Yes, yes. As soon as the commission uh, inquires, I'll let you stand up and identify yourself and tell us whatever you need, okay? Thank you so much. We'll get to you. Thank you. Thank you. Go. Kind of torn on this one because I know most of what's being proposed is out of jurisdiction, but I remember the original project, and I think there was a modification to the original project, and now this was an expansion to it further further to the east. Is that correct? Correct. So there's a three-story storage building proposed behind the extra uh, the one space that's the, storage. Behind the one that's there now. Correct. And, and I and remember debating at the time, this was years ago when that first, not many years ago, but you know, some years ago, when that first building was built. And there was a modification that happened out back, and I don't, don't remember what it was. But I remember the issue being a perched groundwater table that they were wrestling with, I, I seem to remember. So I'm kind of curious, you know, this, it, again, it's out of our jurisdiction probably, but you're putting all this new acreage in and you have this infiltrating system that's shown on the drawings. Is, did this go for review? Do yes. We, do we know this, what the soil condition is? This went before is? the planning board. Do, the planning I mean, board So the stormwater's already been reviewed? Yeah. And, and it's adequate? It, they went through the review process. Okay. I. This came before the front of the building soils seem to be much different than the soils that I'm hearing now is capable of absorbing water. But okay, if they reviewed yeah, it, they reviewed they it. Did. That's is, it. Is the infiltrator existing or is that new? The infiltrator. Well, the it's new. So, correct. It's so new it's part of the new building. Correct. It, it, so part of the new building. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's been reviewed. Yep. Okay. I have no other questions. Where's um, no, I don't, I, I'm also, I don't have questions. No questions here either. Awesome. Okay, uh, we have an abutter that would like to be heard. Can I, can I ask one, I'm sorry, let me ask one other question just out of curiosity. I'm seeing a honeycomb feature up on the eastern end of the lot, the back area, if you will. Yeah. Um, it has a wing wall, looks like an intake structure. It's got, it looks like it's got D's on manholes. I mean, what's its purpose? Is it intermittent stream? Is it to take surface drainage? Is it for future expansion for something else? Um, it's a drainage channel. And the purpose was we relocated uh, the head wall. This building in itself is in the process of being built right now. They're putting the footings in. Uh, it's an active construction site that is out there right now. Um, so. It's just that riprap channel or that drainage ditch, as far as I know, has been there for decades. In That's not new on the property. Yeah, no. In 1997, the commission issued 
a negative number one determination that the riprap armored swale at the rear of the property was not jurisdictional. It's not jurisdictional. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Since we don't get to ask any of the questions we want to. And again, like I said, it's not all by saying it's the, unless there's, unless this is collecting water from a resource area that we're not seeing to the rear of the site, it's not even jurisdictional up that far. But, you know, seeing a drainage ditch with that kind of definition to it makes me wonder where's it all coming from. Something, up, something upstream. Well, it's a perched water table. It's on the side of a hill. It's your classic Woodbridge soils with a perched water table. Okay, and the planning board review of the infiltrator is functioning in a perched water table. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, I'm all set. Doesn't make sense, but I guess I can't ask it. Let's let the uh, butters uh, inquire. Maybe that'll generate some more questions. If you'd be kind enough to just tell us your name and address. Yes, and Andreoli at 15 Bradford Street. I'm in a butter. I'm the second house on Bradford Street. Okay. And as I look out my bedroom window, I have this beautiful backyard, beautiful trees, and now we're proposing to put a light, a fixture, oh, wow. in front where I look out of my house. And I just wanted to ask a simple question. Have we looked at any other options besides putting a telephone, a, a pole in there with a light on it. Is there any other options besides bringing it to this committee to have it looked at? May I ask that? I, yeah. I guess that's for you. Okay, so the pole itself is yes. proposed near Osgood Street? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But our and backyard abuts the property where our, our our yard extends into the woods, and then your facility owns the wooded area and the storage facility. So we back, you back up to so us. So if we look out our backyard, we can see the existing building right in my backyard. Okay. And we, and okay. To the construction and everything. Um, but I was under. I want to understand why that telephone, that pole, had to be put in that location. Why so was Why did you have to bring it to this particular meeting? Is there any other option you could do, like you have the first building, you have lights around the building. You don't have a pole. So the pole is proposed near the driveway entrance to the building. So it's as far away as it possibly could be from your home. Understood. But where's the light going? It's a utility pole proposed right, right here. So we're going to have this light. We look out the window and get this and where light is that, shining. Where is that going to go to? Isn't it going to have to go to a new light? Mm -hmm. No, it's going to be an underground trench that they're um, proposing to go up to a mounted pad with a transformer on the pad with bollards around it. Why didn't they plan it better so that we wouldn't have this meeting today, so we wouldn't have infringed upon 100 feet? I guess a simple that's question what the simple question is, is right? how are you planning on lighting up that area not... with the second building? I, I understood you have a cement... Uh, some yeah. cement put on the driveway and have a little big giant light going on, correct? Right, so it's a utility pole located as far away as possible. In regards to where it's located, it's within the 100-foot buffer zone, which is why we're in front of the commission tonight. My understanding with working with National Grid, I think they kind of dictate where the poles go. So we're yeah. at the mercy of them. Well, why um, aren't you at the mercy of them for the first building? You just have lights on your building. Regarding the lights on the, the building behind the first building, I, I don't know what that plan is. It's not conservation's jurisdiction. Right. Um, it's not this board's jurisdiction. But couldn't we have something not as intense as a spotlight? Is there a code requirement? for? Is there some kind of a code requirement that would mandate the installation that they're talking about? I don't know. My, my understanding feels is... Like I'm sorry. No, it feels like a planning board question because and we're also, not going to deal with lighting I'm here. Hearing, I'm trying to listen very carefully, and I think I'm hearing two different things, too. Your house is the, what, third one in the project? Second. Second one in. Right. So the one that has the right. 023 on it where, you, where the hand is? That's it right there. The light pole that you're seeing, is it down near the street? Or yes. is it up? 
Is it? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's right down near no, the No, no, I'm asking the abutters. Is that, which, which light are you concerned with? The one near I'm the street? I'm concerned with the one that would be placed on the project behind that they're building, the building now. Yes, okay. that's, and that's what I'm hearing. So there is a light pole. I just want to be clear, if you yeah. look at the plan, there is a light pole right behind their house on site, which is a landscape feature and not a utility feature. And it's non jurisdiction to this commission. It's a planning board question. These questions you're asking should have been asked. We didn't even know what the I don't get any notifications. We got one no, for this no, one, but not for the last one. Is the planning board process closed? Yes. Yeah. It is closed? Yeah. The building's right. under construction. It's not the first time, because right. there was another issue when they See, the, the so there is there is a light pole. That's why I wanted to step in. You guys keep talking about the one at the street. That's not their concern. Their concern is up here, which is not within our jurisdiction. We have no say tonight on that. But I see exactly what you're talking about, and don't be misled. When they're talking about the one down the street, that's not the one you're worrying about. It's just one up here, it's which is right I'm in your backyard. About. Yeah, it's not backyard. Which back is right yet. in your backyard. And right now, we can see the lights from the first building in our backyard, which were nice and soft when they first built it. So you, they were nice, and you didn't and see now it. They're very now bright. they're like really bright in the back. So the light. So you probably should call the planning office tomorrow and explain exactly your concern that you, you're in a butter. Yep. You did not get notice. You got notice of this mm -hmm. while you're here, right? Right, exactly. You're in a body, you didn't get notice, and find out if there's a flaw in their process. And, and you know, this is, is it too late now? Planning. Is it you too have late? to ask that and question. It's not I don't the first know. time that we weren't notified well. about something, and we were told, well, it's done to be all So that it's kind of. Yeah. So you, 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 sh you definitely should go, come to the town building tomorrow be before. What, what time does the planner? The planner I don't know what her schedule. You need to call and make I will. email her. Or I, call I would her. do it. One other thing I do want to mention, though, that I think is more conservation in nature, and, and I never introduced myself. My name is Paula Andreoli. Um, is that we have a lot of water now that pools um, the edge of uh, property uh, grass to the woods, the property, and we never had big, huge areas of water. And we're concerned that with this new construction, the problem might even get worse. All right. We never had, in 30 never. years, we never had water. I mean, now we're getting pooling in the years. back. It's springtime all the way into late May that we're getting pooling back there. And we never had water back there. Since when? Well, how long? The house was built in 1957. I was how long in the house. How long has the pooling since? Since, since they the did the storage, first, first storage unit. The first um, unit. Since the first storage yeah. unit? Yes. Oh, well, I don't know how long that's been in place. but I'm guessing it's probably been 10 years. Yeah. At least. Okay. Yeah, it's not that long ago. Oh, I see. My line of questioning that I opened up when it came to me first was exactly along those lines. Our jurisdiction is extremely limited. Mm -hmm. We have 100 feet from a wetland resource area, which happens to be on the other side of Oscar Street. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we can talk about is extremely limited, mm -hmm. and the things that you're raising concerns are legitimate with the planning board, but yep. not with us. I raise the questions because I remember the front pro project. Mm -hmm. I remember the groundwater problem that was there. I remember being concerned with it with regards to how the drainage detention area up front was designed. And I see what they're proposing here, even though I don't, from, from a visual perspective, I, I don't have great faith that it functions, it will function as intended. I can't ask that question. Planning board's already dealt with it. Okay. So you have to talk to Thank the planning you. office. Thank you. Okay. It, so it, it might be helpful for you to get all your concerns, in a, put it in a letter, mm -hmm. address it to the property manager, you know, at, at the uh, property that you have issue with, and maybe copy the town planner here in uh, North Andover. Um, that, that'll show they'll show that you're serious about it and um, and give them something to deal a document to deal with mm -hmm. and something you can follow up with so. okay but don't waste any time no I get in touch with the plan thank you very much okay thank you for your time. Right, thank thanks. you so the poll that the poll that we're talking about in, in this, this application is the one of the street yep because it is jurisdiction but it's not there that's right but that's what we're concerned about. that's right okay. yep any other about us want to be heard no other but his answer. Uh, where are we on the commission here? Are you ready for a motion? Yeah. So I uh, recommended closing with a negative number three, uh, requiring a pre-construction meeting with the conservation department and the um, 
contractor to inspect uh, the silt sacks and the catch basins. All excavated materials shall be immediately containerized so as to protect the existing uh, surface detention basin and from running down the access drive. Um, any disturbed soil shall be seeded and blanketed if warranted and ordered by the conservation agent and then a post-construction meeting to verify compliance and removal of soil sites. And we will close and issue a negative three with those um, uh, contingencies criteria. Second. second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Abbreviated Notice of Resource Area Delineation, 2421889, 492 Sutton Street. Hi. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thanks, good morning. Horsley Witten. Horsley Witten, right? All righty. Um, so this is the first hearing for an ANRAD at the airport. Uh, there is 927 linear feet of bordering vegetated wetland and 110 linear feet of uh, bank to an intermittent stream that are subject to this review. Um, the area of study is north of the runway 14. Um, I did walk the wetland line with the wetland consultant in uh, mid-April or early May and we did ad adjust three flags uh, the plan before you um, the plan before you reflects those changes um, it's on three plan sheets um, and let's see and that's really it the wetland consultants here this evening if you have any questions for him but you know it is what it is and I did draft a decision if you you know see fit to close the hearing okay Joseph so the airport's an expansive area and we've maybe not we I've wrestled with multiple permits on this property for a number of different circumstances and part of that is some of the least property that the the airport owns but leases to others that have been in violation have orders of conditions have not moved forward on them have had a subsequent failure and collapse of a glass pile with a jury with a enforcement order issued to them on that and they've done nothing so my curiosity is is if the airport's the landlord on a parcel of land on the same property that is in violation is this even properly before us so I know you know what's in front of there's no work proposed with this filing but the filing it, it, this is just nailing down the line but it's still a filing so it, I, I it, guess it is I, a I guess I'm really curious is what is the status of that other project that we had in order conditions on that they never moved forward on and when they did move forward on the glass pile collapsed for lack of a better phrase it catastrophically mm -hmm. failed into the wetland and they've Ignore us. I want to say for, I don't want to use hyperbole, but I want to say for two or three years. Is this an opportunity years. for the landowner, because they need something, to get on their tenant and say, fix it. You're holding up our development. Because that's what I'm prepared to make them do. Because we're getting nothing out of, from, mm -hmm. from where I sit, I see nothing since the collapse of that pile. And I thought we were pretty forgiving back in the time because we hoped I was going to say thought I don't think I ever believed it we had hoped they were going to move forward on that other project and as part of that they were going to address this collapse mm -hmm. pile my recollection is nothing has been done and I think that the landowner with a violation of their property can't be before us for an application okay maybe maybe uh, is the area pretty flat right where they're Oh, what, um, 
no, I'm sorry. There's no work proposed, so no. Um, no. Yeah, I can jump in there. It's, so this this is just confirming wetland lines at this point. So I, and I apologize. This has been continued for a long time. We had to get a new quote for a survey to get back out there. We walked this April 10th. Um, the area is quite flat. There's a existing stormwater outfall that creates a um, small intermittent stream. The remainder of the uh, properties is a very very slight topography change. But with this project here, there's there's no work proposed at all. You're right that the airport leases land, so unfortunately the project that you're referencing, I, I understand it's probably a, a significant problem for the commission. It's, it's not my client and I don't know them, but what I can say is this project is only taking a look at, I flagged the wetlands out there, and the people who are looking to lease this land wanted to know if I flagged it correctly or not. They have no work proposed, so withholding or approving a wetland line for them, I don't think would have a basis on any other work on the airport. They're just looking at this area as an entity and is it flagged correctly or not is all they're looking for. Um, and at this point, we got to walk it this spring. We made two flag changes, bumped them up into the lawn based on some soils, had survey go back out and pick up the correct line. And so these plans are just now the final iteration of, of what's a corrected line out there. I'm all set. Any questions? Just I'm all set. I'm all set. All set. All right, so are there any about us here for the airport? Okay, so there's no about us. So we, 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 have, a, we have a conundrum. Mm -hmm. We, we, we well, have I raise a conundrum. I'm not sure if they have support well, of that, but I raise it. Well, Joe's 100 percent right in that we're, we're looking at the entire site, the whole airport, and there are projects on there that that are incomplete and not in compliance. Um, we should not. We ought not to take any new filings until those are re rectified. The question is. Does an ANRAD constitute a filing? There's no work proposed. I guess that's the debate, the only debatable item here, because Amy's our agent. She approved the line. We're not questioning the line. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, so I want to know if there are any comments or concerns down the, down the line here with respect to what's been mentioned. Um. Well, I, I do think Joe is correct. I mean, I know this is not uh, an order of conditions. It's just trying to establish a line, but it is a filing in front of us. And generally, if there are open orders of conditions or even um, enforcement orders, we usually don't hear them. Okay. If, if I may just chime in there, I think in a situation like this, it, it may get more confusing for the commission down the road if we... I don't know if we would continue this out or if we would table it, but it's it's a wetland line that we've deemed accurate that at some point work would come proposed by somebody unrelated to the project here. I don't know if the commission has taken enforcement action on the no, existing no, we, out there, but this we, project, in my opinion, because it's all different sections of leased land, at least from my perspective, because it's just a wetland line vote, should be unrelated, but I understand where you're coming from. So let me lay down the reason for my concern besides the simple regulatory jargon in a, in a, in a, in our bylaw or in our regs. The situation is we need to get the attention of infract, of the party that's infract, in, in infraction. The, they had a, they had one issue that was pretty well established that resulted in filing an NOI that resulted in a long protracted study and analysis and, and ultimately in order conditions that went along with the plan. And several years ago, and I think the thing that process started seven or eight years ago. So in good faith, you would expect that sometime before the order of conditions expires, they would have at least started. They've done nothing. They haven't posted bond. They've done nothing right. on that project. In the midst of dragging their feet and doing nothing, they all, the, the very same area we had a concern with had a failure of that slope where a mountain of glass slid into the wetland. It, the, the situation is the tenant who's the infracting party, the name shows the word, but the, who, who's the violator is a tenant. They don't own the land. And the landlord could care less from where I stand because he keeps getting permits. He keeps coming in, he's, mm -hmm. you know, he asks for projects and we review them, he keeps getting. It's about time the landlord says, hey, you've encumbered our land, you've got a violation, and I can't get what I need. Get off your ass and fix it. 
Yeah. We need that kind of horsepower. Yeah. The purpose of not letting applications come in on a property with a violation on it is exactly for that purpose. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity. Answer that question. Say it again, please. Continue for two weeks and answer that question. Well, the regulatory. So, I want to know why this is our only vehicle for punishment. Is the, the well, wetlands law? Don't can we damages or anything? Yeah. If if I may ask a question to the commission, and I I don't know the project is is. Other portions of the airport currently under violation. So I know they have an order of conditions. Was that order of conditions to restore existing violations that have not been done? So, so, so the yes. answer is yes. There's violation yes. on another portion of the airport. Okay, yes. thank you. So my my thought process is, unfortunately, my client that I'm billing for this work, doing this for, have invoiced for the work and, and got them a line, yeah, I, does I, not I, own the airport or anything like that. I think something that makes sense to me here is definitely no new filings for notice of intents or work proposed. Um, I, I think. And ORAD, just to say that this portion of the airport is flagged correctly, is beneficial to the commission for any new work that comes forward here. It's already been reviewed. You want to know that it's flagged correctly in case any work comes here. And then I think the easiest way to get what's being discussed here is, is likely enforcement action for violation. If they have an order of conditions to restore it. We, we have that. We, okay. We have that. We, we've, we've, we're way ahead of you. Perfect. Sounds so good. I just I don't think it's related to the internet here. That's yes, yeah. one big parcel. One if big it's one parcel, you legally cannot file, file anything with, that, with an open that's, that's order our of point. conditions. So, so that, 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 that's that's Joe's point. I mean, yeah. And that's right on. I'm going to offer a recommendation, Joe, just to, in order to move this thing along. Continue. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to suggest, and it's only a suggestion, that we deal with the ANRAD, independent of the of all the other discussion. But we at the same time uh, direct our administrator to compose a letter to the airport authority advising that no new applications will be accepted under any conditions until the uh, violation is, is uh, complied with. Um, so they can, they can get the ANRAD, they can, they can establish this ANRAD, they know where their flag line is, but nothing's going on, no other permit, no, nothing's coming in. Everything will be, and, and I would ask Amy to re uh, reject mm -hmm. anything that comes in just refuse to okay. accept it um, or, or bring it to us and we'll do it for you. Um, yeah. uh, we, we have Joe's, Joe's right on. Uh, I'm, I'm not so worried about this particular action, this ANRAD, because it's, it, it's, a, it's a resource area delineation. They're not, it, they, they need this to go forward, but they're not going forward. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can relay that to your client. I'm happy to. The, the, the client for this actually works on But we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to have Amy send a letter from the commission. By all means, I a, a, advising absolutely. the authority that get, you know it's over. Yeah, I'll I'll pass on a friendly reminder as well just for future projects <laughs> with you guys. Well, that's my recommendation now. Yep. Doesn't mean that the commission's going to accept my recommendation. It's just an opinion. Sure. I only vote if there's a tie. So <laughs> we, sure. ha, there has to be a motion made and Thank you. there has to be a vote. Or there, or there can be more discussion. There's a one comment. So this doesn't allow them to do work within the buffer zone, but would allow them to know where the buffer zones are, to know where they could do work without our approval. That's right. Yep. Just. Yep. I just, guess. I guess that's true. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm not sure if it matters. I'm just bringing that point up. No, it's a fair it, question. A I guess point. to play devil's advocate, because the line's been out, now been walked and reviewed, and we know it's correct, we do know where the buffer zones are in the lot, regardless. But but technically, it shows where buffer zones are. Um, I I do know that at least from talking about this, the only areas that are really being looked at out here are within the buffer zone because they're undeveloped. Everything else has already been worked on. So this isn't the repaving project. This was the idea of let's see where the buffer zones are, see where hangers can go, anything like that. So you guys would, ha you guys would have to see an application for any work that would be proposed for any new construction. Who are, you, who are you working for? Are you working for the airport authority or the, or the uh, construction company that wants to put up the hangers? So yeah, so my, my client is, they're called Gale Associates. They're an engineering firm and they work with people who lease land from airports to look at for potential hangers. So the airport actually, well, they have to sign off on the application, but I don't deal with them in any way, shape, or form. And that, that was kind of my discussion here. Okay. Glass and the wetlands, and all we can do is strongly worded letter. No, we've already taken action on it. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the violation, there's an enforcement order in place already. There is, there is a violation that was caused by the heavy rainstorms of 2023. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Why have we done damages like we've done on so many other people? We, we, we're not ignoring it, we are pursuing it. DEP was involved yeah, before they, we got involved in it. This thing has been going on for 20, right. 20 years. Right. We became aware of it late in the game. 
DEP had been handling it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, nobody's been dragging on this. Um, we've had several site visits. We've, we've, we've worked on it diligently. We are working on it diligently. Um, it just seems silly. I only have one. So that was the original violation. And then once we, once we went through the process after a long protracted process, they got an order of conditions from us and just never moved forward on it. And while they were waiting or while they were delaying, they had yet another violation, another failure, which created a bigger violation. So that one is the one that's still hanging out there. All right, another piece to learn history. And, and you know, I seem a little, I more than seem a little frustrated, I am frustrated that yeah. the airport seems to just keep coming in and asking things from us and we kind of recognize that they aren't a bad neighbor and we work with them, but nonetheless, this, this thing has just been lingering. I think it's about time we get there is There is one other option that I failed to mention we can continue this matter till the next next. Which I think we should do. We can continue it. Um, I would recommend that. I don't think we're going to get on the same page on this one. And, and that's we don't have to be. <laughs> yeah. We don't have we, we we you know, but we can we can continue it to see if uh, what what Amy maybe can determine by talking to the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, the owner. And we can do the same thing in two weeks. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? There be none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's been asked. We're continued. You're yeah, continued. Sorry. Sounds the worst thing. Thank Better you. than being executed. A little bit. Just barely. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Amy. All right. All right. Uh, we're at the notice of intent. We have uh, several notices that are requesting to be continued. 242 1894, request to continue to 925 24. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous. 242-1901-1250 Osgood Street. Request to continue to 925. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. 242-1900 Great Pond Road. Request to continue to 925. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. And 242-1903-186 Bradford Street, request to continue to 925-24. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous. So the remaining is 242-1899-865 and 877 Johnson Street. And this is continued from 828. Commission rule of call that this project entails uh, two new single family houses. Um, one lot is a teardown and a rebuild with a new foundation. Um, these lots were part of a four lot subdivision uh, with more than an acre of disturbance, which triggered the planning board's land disturbance permitting process, which entailed stormwater management requirements. Um, two of the lots on Mill Street have been developed and have been closed out. They did receive orders of conditions with the commission. Um, at the last hearing, um, the commission wanted more information on uh, stormwater management BMPs um, relative to the land disturbance permit. The uh, applicant's engineer went back and basically took what was previously approved by the planning board um, and mimicked what, what was proposed here on these plans. Um, adding roof infiltration um, chambers and stone drip edges for driveway edges. Um, let's see. And he's also, we are also using um, the previous engineers detail sheet for the BMPs. Um, 
Bill Dufresne is the project engineer with the applicant with him if you have any questions. So I can summarize just a little, little more um, than Amy did. When we originally permitted the four lots, we went through the process of getting ANR approval for the creation of the lots and conservation approval for the lots. They, the owners then sold two of the lots. Those lots were developed. The person who developed those lots went through the planning board process of the land disturbance permit. Because the planning board looked at this as an aggregate project of four lots, they permitted all four lots with the land disturbance permit. What happened was, um, uh, who did that plan? Jack Sullivan. Jack, Jack Sullivan did the plan, and rather than doing a plan, he overlaid our plan. So he took our site plans for the septic okay. and site design and overlaid stormwater storm on storm onto it. So we ha I had a discussion with both Amy and Gene Enright. I said, why, can't I, why won't I take Jack's design that he overlaid onto my plans, make it part of my plans, Gene took that to the planning board and they agreed that was satisfactory and that the permit that's in place for the two remaining lots is still in effect. And so I basically took his overlay and made it part of our design. He has additional sheets than ours, which are the detailed sheets of construction and his operation and maintenance plan, which are still intact in place for the facilities that I added to my plans. Okay. And that's where we are today. Thank you. Joe. Well, I understand all that. I just want to make sure the record is clear on our understanding. So you have, what we have submitted is your Merrimack engineering sheet for, for these two lots mm -hmm. with the composite of all of those three different plans on your one sheet. So Correct. your one sheet is the record as far as the plan itself is concerned. Correct. The Jack Sullivan plan, second sheet, is, is uh, details. It's the one that accompany the older permit and rather than redrafting it you're looking to annex it to your plan correct you have Jack's permission to do that and the plan of board agreed to do that do you so we have two documents with two separate professional engineering stamps being submitted as a single package I mean, as he did by overlaying our plan it's the, now it's the reciprocal, it's the reverse of that now, too. So let me ask you this. Why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't Merrimack just re just redraw this detail sheet and submit it cleanly? Why wouldn't we? Because it, just, it looks to me just peculiar that we're going to have two record drawings from two separate professionals with call-outs on a plan on a detail prepared by somebody else. And it just yeah. seems odd. As a professional engineer, this is not something that you can ethically do without Jack, uh, Jack Sullivan's permission. I will say this. The stormwater requirements are a requirement of the planning board. This is four less, the equivalent of four lots or less, so stormwater didn't come into play as a, as a conservation requirement. When he overlaid our plans, he, he obtained no authorization whatsoever. We were never contacted. And he overlaid our plan and said, this is an overlay on Merrimack Engineering's plans. So, so two wrongs make it right. I got no, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm That's what I heard. I, I, all right, understood, understood. We can do that. It was a I matter think, of time. I just think it's. Okay, I don't want to use the word lazy. I don't see why it is that pre-standard details couldn't be put on a Merrimack Engineering drawing and make this question go away. Make this make the submittal be for these two lots under the stamp of Merrimack Engineering and have it all as a single package. It just makes sense to me. And I think anything else doesn't, <coughs> this doesn't make sense. That's, that's what I have. As far as what you're proposing, it makes complete sense. The, the work is fine. You know, when I first looked at it, Joe, I looked at I was cleaning up a situation that I was not even aware of in him overlaying our plans. So now what I did is I overlaid, I took his overlay and made a part of our plans. But you're right, now we have details and specifications that belong to him. Um, and so we can do that. It's simply a timing and a cost factor and nothing more than that. That's all I have. Sure. Um, do we have documentation of the, uh, <coughs> the planning board approval of the uh, stormwater for the four lots? Um, I did provide, I emailed the um, 
plan board's decision. Oh, was that? Go ahead. I, don't, I didn't so, print it off with your packet, but it's in your email. Is, uh, okay. I have a printed copy. I'm not sure like who is the review. I, I believe you. He's got it. Yeah. 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 I, I, I emailed it to him. Brad's asking for the date, though. Can you tell us what the date? Feb 21, 2018. 18. Well, actually, the recorded date was March 20th, 2018. That's when it was recorded at the registry. I'm all set. Chris? Um, so, I guess I'm, I'm still trying to understand the, this design was done previously, the stormwater design was done previously, and you overlaid it onto the updated drawings? Sullivan Engineering yep. added it to our drawings okay. when he went through the plant, previous planning board process. I never knew of it. When, when I left this last meeting, did research with the planning board, Gene forwarded us all the approved yeah. documents, and I saw my plan with an overlay by Jack Sullivan saying this is an overlay onto Mary Max plans by Jack Sullivan. So I took those and added them to my plan. Gotcha. Had so, a discussion in an email with Gene. Just, I don't see why we have to redo all the details, but I understand I understand where you're coming from. Okay. So it's it's not mimicking the previous like it it, it is the same exact as the previous design. Yes, it is. Okay. That, that's all. No okay. questions. Brad. Second time today I've seen an infiltrator design wrong that I can't do anything about. Oh, good. Okay. Any butters here for this? No butters answer? Um, I guess we're ready for a motion. I move that we close and issue a order of conditions for 242-1899. Are we not expecting a new plant coming in? We need to So are we asking? Yeah, we need we, to continue. Yeah, we need to continue. Right. Yeah, we need yeah. to continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. we're, so what are we asking the applicant to do? We want the sections and details to be on Merrimack yeah, Engineering. Right. So we incorporate Stand. the detail sheets into our package. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to continue two weeks. Understood. Second. Second. Motion a second to continue. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, that's unanimous. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, uh, enforcement orders. 863 Winter Street. issued an enforcement order for unauthorized construction of hardscape uh, within uh, partially within the 25 and the 50 foot no build zone to an intermittent stream and bordering vegetated wetland at 863 Winter Street uh, you established a deadline for carrying out removal and restoration for May 31st of 2024 um, just so you know I when I was out there for the pre-construction, I did administratively approve removal of hazardous trees in that area. Um, they were clearly either dead, dying, and had significant leans towards the house. Once they were cut, uh, a number of them were rotted in the middle. So um, all hardscape was removed by May 31st. Plants were purchased on May 31st and invoices provided to me. Plants were installed June 6th. Final sodding and disturbed areas in the 50 uh, was installed and the wetland markers were completed June 26th and the same was reported to me on the 27th. Erosion controls um, have been, uh, had been installed at the pre-construction. Uh, they are in good shape and they're still functioning. Areas of work have revegetated fairly quickly, um, and the homeowner has been diligent about watering the, the um, newly planted shrubs and the seed and the native seed mix. Um, there was some scheduling um, difficulties in the beginning for pre-construction that set them back a number of days. Um, that being my fault, my schedule got messed up. Um, but once 
you know, they got, we had the pre-construction, they went right to it um, and kept progress growing, going throughout. Um, so while they didn't complete every single thing on May 31st, they had all of the hardscape and all of the unpermitted structures out and working towards getting plants in and all that. So um, the commission did um, vote to assign, issue f daily fines starting in, I forget when we issued this order. December In 14th. December. Um, to, um, you know, it's like a carrot to make things work and go faster. Um, so we did write fine tickets daily, sent them out. Um, I stopped fining on the 26th of June uh, and currently fines stand at 19500 The project wetland consultant has provided, I asked her for a timeline of, you know, all that's gone on um, to understand how, you know, their progress had unfolded. Um, they are asking that the fines be rescinded. Um, I personally agree with that. I think they, you know, showed good faith and, you know, they worked hard to just get it done. Um, so <coughs> they're here this evening if you have questions for them, but things are looking good. Well, let me ask you just a couple quick questions. Yes. We'll discuss. Uh, are, are you are you satisfied with the enforcement order? Do you, are you prepared to vacate the enforcement order? No. It needs to remain in place because it, we have two years of monitoring and we need 75% overall survivorship. So the remaining that's item... All, that's all we're waiting on. The, the, in other words, right. the, the only thing on the EO is, is the yes, survivorship is, of the plants? Yes. Okay. Um, everything else is, is compliant? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I know it was a long, drawn-out process and a lot of work to get it done. The fine served the purpose. I, I think that we're satisfied with the work and... In, in, Proving it out over the growing period, over the next couple of seasons, that that's fine, and I I, I would be inclined to, to waive the fine. No questions. No questions. No questions. Okay, so I just have to ask the the, 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 the final question: Is the commission in favor of waiving the fines in totality, or retaining any 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 money uh, to ensure the survivability, or does it? Would that be uh, moot at this point? Well, do we have money to retain? No. No, no, no because yeah. it wasn't a notice. Right. There was no bond. So it's just no, we to just keep any fines out there. Fines, and they were held in abeyance. So then, actually, we couldn't hold back any money then because it's an enforcement yeah. order. So we legally right. we couldn't. So it's, it's it's an all or nothing. No, no, I mean. We're not allowed to hold money on an EO. Really? It has to be on, on an well, cash. We're not cash. You're, but you're saying rescinding the fines. We could just simply no, I'm not, hold the fines and. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about rescinding. Well, I'm, I'm reading the recommendation, and um, there, there was a, a portion of the recommendation that suggested retaining a small, a lesser amount. If you guys were really insistent, okay, but I'm, that's an avenue where I was going to suggest that abolish fines up until June first. I don't think we can do that. Yes, um, yeah, that's why. I and asked then because it was in good faith, but, we, I, I, I would have. And no, I feel like it would I just have no be punitive. Of collecting a fine. Okay, so the motion we're looking for is to uh, to reset, to re waive waive any and all fines. Currently totaling nineteen thousand five hundred dollars, we'd be we'd be rescinding the, the refine the fines. That's that's what's before. That's the request that's before us. Sorry. Motion and second discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Close, and that's unanimous. All set. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, it. so just monitoring from here on out and making sure that all areas are 75%, you know, shrubs are living and seed is living and all that great that. stuff. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks for doing a good job. Yeah. Came out good. 344 Street. All righty. Enforcement order update. All right, so this enforcement order was... Um, for an unper unpermitted koi pond and associated appurtenances to be removed no later than September 30th. 
Um, I performed a site inspection on August 23rd and it was able to verify compliance with the enforcement order. All unpermitted structures have been removed and although no planting or replanting was required, the homeowner went ahead and planted three or four native trees at one to one and a half inch caliber. There were oaks and maples. Um, you know, they did a seed mix, it's growing in, so they were ahead of schedule. So I just recommend lifting the enforcement order and just considering the site back into compliance. Yep. No questions. No. All set. All set. No questions. Ready for a motion? Just to continue the enforcement order. No, to lift it. Okay. Move to lift. Motion to lift. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. It's lifted. Okay, the next item that's on under enforcement orders is the Foster Street oil spill BMP removal update. This is on at my request. Um, Jack and I, several other members have been out there since the oil spill occurred. Two, it'll be two years in January. Um, the insurance company hired Clean Harbors. Clean Harbors did an arguably bad job. Um, their workmanship was terrible and at the end of the day, they were they were uncooperative. They relied upon DEP to carry their water, which DEP did. DEP said, "We're not going to make them go any further." Jack was at that meeting. He can he can answer any questions you have about that. So at the end of the day, the insurance company yanked the money, and the job is not complete. The brook is full of oil booms and all kinds of material that needs to come out. Um, Amy has already requested that Clean Harbors come out and get that junk out of the brook and clean up the wetland that they were sent there to clean up in the first place. Um, the reason why it's on here tonight is we have to, we have to look at an alternative means of, com of compelling either Clean Harbors or the owner of the truck that spilled the oil. Somebody's got to clean that up, finish it. The truck driver is going to tell you I filed my insurance claim. They, they, they're not put, giving us any more money. Well, that, that's really too bad uh, because the insurance company said there's no more money. That doesn't relieve anybody of their responsibility. So um, we need a direction real quick because it's September and we're going to lose the weather. By November, it'll be not impossible but difficult to clean. <coughs> so it's on, it's on here for discussion. Any comments? opinions, anything at all would be appreciated. Um, otherwise, it, it, we'll just, what Amy and I have done up to this point is just send communications to Clean Harbors. But I think there needs to be a legal strategy, strategy here. Um, we had a meeting once upon a time about this with the town manager and some other people, but um, it didn't, didn't go forward from there. Do we have anything open right now concerning this? It's still an open enforcement order, right? Yeah, technically, yes. Um, was it enforcement or was it emergency cert? No, it was an enforcement. Yeah, we let them do the work on the Yes, right, right. right. Um, so they have a... Um, we can't I, use pronouns yet because I think we, the, the responsible parties is really what's going to be the issue. So Hilton Oil, doing their job, had an accident. It was properly insured. Got an emergency response team involved that needed to be involved, and this is where it breaks down. Is the responsible party is Hilton. Clean Harbors is their contractor right. who raked them over the coal and picked their pocket every way they could. I, I don't mind saying that publicly. No, I agree. They they raped our land. Joe, I agree. I, and, I agree. and the reason why the insurance company shut off the money is the money ran out on the coverage. Yeah. I, I, I imagine. And it's only because Clean Harbors spent all of it without finishing it. So clean up is that I hate to say it, I don't think you're on the hook with us. Well we have competent counsel on on, on, on the commission here. Yeah, just, just a couple of thoughts. I do think Hilton is the responsible party. That that's for sure. But did Clean Harbors make the situation worse? They just didn't complete it. I don't think they made it any worse. I don't think you could have made it any worse. Eight hundred gallons of oil went into the brook. Um, you know, I don't think you could have made it any worse. However 
They're, they're, well, that's what I mean. I mean, they've got they got oil soaked booms still sitting there. That they're still there. Removed. They're, they're, well, that's right. correct. That's so, my so, point. The oil so, soaked booms are still in place. That's what's that's what's aggravating. And those were placed so, there by right. Clean Harvest. Clean Harvest. Clean Harvest. So Clean Harvest. Clean Harvest. Clean, 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 clean Harvest. Clean yeah, they, Harvest. They're now responsible for the booms. Right, 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 right. And they and they they they're not. They know that. Um, clean Harbors contacted me in the spring, and said, you know, we want to remove the the booms. Um, but we actually, Al and I asked them not to because it was nesting season. It was yeah. we were full swing nesting. We season. asked them to wait. Okay, so we asked them to wait. Um, and so they did, and you know, they get busy. I get busy. We get busy. And for the new and they haven't the gotten back there. We didn't simply out of pocket ask them to wait. As part of the whole process, sensitivity of. <clears throat> how that resource area was used by the critters that lived there, yes. how the habitat functioned. Right. There were certain things they could do only during certain windows of time. Well, we fact, didn't ask for anything we didn't always ask well, for. Well, in fact, that's exactly right. right. We hired, this commission hired a wetland expert to do an assessment on our behalf because we wanted somebody independent of not so clean harvest. So, uh, yep. So it's not like, not, not like we arbitrarily suggested that they not do their work. So no, were, no, 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 right. We did it because of, you know, they were going to... So, so they were right. willing to do it in the spring. It wasn't the right time. Right. Are they willing to do it now? Um, I'm sure they're willing to do it now. Well, then um, let's it's just well, a matter responded. of... They haven't responded. Amy has... I mean, I, I emailed them, and then um, I had some communications with um, Keith Sullivan, who is... The LSP? Well, well he works sort of in tandem with Alan Walker at Clean Harbors. And I said, you know, can we get some movement on this? Carries Alan's water, And he? he said, well, I don't, you know, this is not my case, but, um, and he did talk about, um, you know, the insurance money and that sometimes if you don't get paid, then we kind of stop services in a nutshell and asked Alan, is that the case? And I haven't heard back yet, but that's I'm just saying just telling you what All right so what does the Commission want Amy to do next I think continue the conversation for not more than a week and at which point in one of those conversations you tell them the next time you hear from us you'll hear for, through an official process and I would get town council to fire a letter off to them and, and now name them as a responsible party to finish the cleanup okay I would do that in writing too. Yep. Your communication to Clean Harbors, yeah. I would do that in writing. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Is the responsibility of the oil company, though, that spilled it? Because yeah. well, they, like they, not they have, the I think you have two harvest. avenues here, and I don't think they're mutually exclusive. You have an enforcement, open enforcement order against tilted oil that you can amend and to, to get it up to what you want it to do today. And simultaneously, if they uh, you don't get the response you want within the next mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. I think why can't we issue an enforcement order against Clean Harbors for them uh, leaving their the crap in our wetland? I see it functioning exactly in yeah. that order. And yeah. it's okay. a belt and suspenders approach, and between the two of them, hopefully we're going to get some responses. Okay. All right. Hi there. If you need to come up to If you want to comment, we would welcome your comment. <clears throat> Just got to get up to that podium, and you know what to do. I'm Melinda Perone from 65 Meadowwood Road, um, and the reason I come here each each uh, each meeting is to talk about Mosquito Brook because uh, we live at the top of Mosquito Brook. But with specifically with Clean Harbors, um, Clean Harbors sits the the company sits in the middle of North Andover, almost in the middle of our town, right on the side of our historic uh, brook. Kajikowit Brook. And if you walk down to Sutton Pond, which is basically the end of Kajikowit Brook, and you look in there, it's right next to Clean Harbors, and it is filthy. So I'm asking, why is Clean Harbors given that, or why are they allowed to exist in that one spot next to our very historic <laughs> Kajikowit Brook, and do poor work when asked. Are you talking about the Dizzy Bridge Pond? 
So that's that's privately owned. I don't know if you know that. I realize that. Yeah. But it's it, that's a, a hardscape area. Yeah. That whole area next to Kachikowic Brook. Right. So I guess my question is, because, you know, we drive over there quite frequently for services, not from Clean Harbors, but I'm just wondering why they are allowed to be in the center of our town if they do such... That's an industrial pack they're in. That, that where, where they're located is, is an industrial zone. It's an industrial zoned area. It's the only place they can exist. They have, they have to be in an, in an I-1, what is it, I-1 or I-2 zone. Um, I mean, anyway, anyway that, that's where they need to be. They've, they've been there 35 years. And they've been there a long time, yeah. And I don't know what I'm saying. I'd like to get them to work out on uh, Foster Street. That's yeah. what, if we can get them to go a couple miles east of there. Yeah. And I get everybody here, I'm, I'm sure you do understand as well, as they're a multinational conglomerate. Yes. That, I, that yes. entity that's in, in North Andover probably isn't the the same probably isn't the same entity that does the the, 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 the this is responsible for this project you know uh, of cleaning up the oil spill on, on Foster Street I think it's done out of a, out of a completely different subsidiary or different division um, I just want to sh uh, express my concern for both of those brooks well, I like the way she's thinking I mean, if you want to get some leverage you can find out if there are any violations out there at that location we, that would be helpful. That's what she was telling us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I guess. So I think I have my marching orders. Yeah, I, I just gonna say if anybody else has any other recommendations. I, I don't know now. Do you re, you recall the meeting we had with, with the with the TM and special yeah, counsel? Yeah. Does that need? Does, does any update need to be made there? Um, because at the time. It was the same subject. Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly don't think so. Okay. All right. Very good. Is that only coming up in two years? It seems like longer. It's, it'll be yeah. two years in January. Two I think. years in January. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But uh, okay. Yeah. So that, you know what to do. Yeah. Get them. So we'll we, we'll continue this to the nine nine twenty five meeting. Yeah. And my letter will indicate that their we, BMPs need we to wanna, be removed. We want it. We want it cleaned up by that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Or we'll consider, or, or the commission will take. No, I, yeah, we want them. Know, we want them to, to get it done by the by yes. the next meeting. Yes. And don't tell them what. Don't give them. A, don't say or anything. Just leave it. Leave it at that's okay. the deal. Okay. We'll 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 think we'll figure out the or part at the meeting. If, okay. If there's a need be to. Okay. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Or else. Um, Alrighty. And with Alrighty. that, I see we have two decisions. Yep. Two, one. two delivery or one decision. One oh, that's right. We, that's right. So never mind. With Which that. one are we looking at? We're looking at uh, Route 114 sewer rehab. 2421898. Okay. Yep. Of the draft decision, I have a memo with uh, an additional cons condition for consideration, um, and it's kind of self-explanatory. <coughs> so I'll let you review it, and I'll be right back.
peer review? I can get it. I'd love to see it. Okay. Thank you. Question, Amy. Um, yeah. These, um, they're going to provide their details for the soil management and dewatering plan <clears throat> prior to constructing, prior to beginning construction, and yeah. they'll do it under a modification of the order. Don't they already know what they're going to do now? Why? Because we can't dictate to the contractor how he his means and methods, and we've kind of talked about that yeah, through the we whole. Did. Okay. I read the 77 pages of excruciating specifications that don't say anything. No, I know. They're pretty boilerplate. They're, they're all boilerplate right out of a standard, and, and they, I know. Don't, they don't say anything for what we would look. Your conditions of dewatering and, and erosion control yeah. in here are going to be critical in, 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 in making sure this gets done. So I think I've been reading this in the fact that you're requiring two meetings, one of them Sit down and a jogging way. Don't don't call it a sick down meeting. Okay, Those okay. Are, that, that, that's that's right, <laughs> crazy. Pre pre. I prefer a stand up. Oh, stand. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, going to be two meetings. One is going to be to talk about the the erosion control pre construction, and then you want a f more formal on site meeting with regards to what the intent is for dewatering. Yeah. So Notwithstanding actually, our performance standard, you made pretty clear in here of basically meeting the turbidity requirements yep. where you ultimately right. discharge it. Right. That meeting is going to tell you how it is they intend to meet that 40 right. NTU. Right. Uh, right. Keep it below it, 40 right. NTU. So my thought was once the contractor's chosen, he can get these plans prepared with a PE, come back to the commission, in front of the commission to actually present what they're going to do. If you, and we could do it under a modification so you'd have another bite at the apple and further condition if you feel necessary. I mean, I just thought that was one way to kind of, I know it was so, not wishy-washy, but it was, it was very boilerplate. So. so the thing I was concerned about, and I still am somewhat concerned about, but at least we're going to be putting the, our order conditions as part of their bid document. Yes. So any bidder ought to know that this is what the town is expecting with regards to dewatering and, and erosion control. Yes. And they, regardless of what the words in the specs say, the order conditions really tells them what the performance standard is that they must meet. So I think one thing I wanted to mention is on which condition number, condition Condition 32, I think, is where it belongs. This document shall include all construction contracts, subcontract specifications, dealing with the work, et cetera, et cetera. But I think we need to have a phrase in there, probably towards the end, that when a conflict uh, may arise between the order conditions or the contract specifications, the order of conditions shall prevail. And that takes away the change order. Yeah. What's that? I think I'm I think that page. Yeah, too. yeah. Condition thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I actually I actually read the one you sent me a week and a half ago, oh, so okay. I really tried to do my homework. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so was that no longer in there? No, it is. It just we just we're missing pages. This goes for some from page reason. twenty-six to page thirty-four. I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah we're missing page four. Yeah, I've got the elderly prints so I could actually read it. <laughs> Just selected the wrong paper size. I made it read a lot easier. All right, let me, um... Yeah, page four is missing from the dog. It's all right. Yeah. Nothing to see here. So the specification is brilliantly vague. It generally tells them what it is they need to do, at least consider. It puts the onus on them to prepare a dewatering plan, process and plan, and to submit that. Right. And our order conditions echoes that, but it also goes further and it says that you know what the performance standard you must meet when you're actually undertaking dewatering yes. is, is in here. So by, I think by putting that phrase in here that this, you know, when in conflict, if yeah. there happens to be a conflict between the specs and what we're saying, we want our order conditions to prevail. Yep. And if, with that mindset, the structure of how you've written it, I don't think is in conflict with their bid documents at all. Okay. Yep. Any other? Comments, questions, concerns? Is the uh, bond? 50,000. 50,000. You're a nice round number. I like that. Yeah, 50,000. Okay. Cash. You on condition 39, where you're going to strike a sit down meeting? Okay. D, you had, a, you had a hashtag question mark, question mark, question mark, which I think is pretty important because it's the dewatering oh. means and methods to achieve standards. Oh, for condition. Um, what do we want to say there? Oh, well, I actually was going to try to refer back to another condition that talks about it. I just didn't know. I didn't want to. So it's going to be another condition elsewhere in our order, not yes. back in this yes. back. Yes. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I want to strike sit down meeting. Well, the yellow. Is it condition 41? Yeah. So okay. I'll probably, I'll have to make sure I connect that dot. Sure, we can read the scripture over there. Why is your paper so big compared to everybody else's? So I selected the wrong paper side by <laughs> mistake, but, I, but I'm finding it so much easier to read, and I do this all like the time. like Moses over there with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> But yes, he is. <laughs> it's because they printed the plans, and this came out after it didn't change. I, I bring you these 15, 10, 10 <laughs> commandments. They're all 10. 10. I, don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why it's Next doing that. Next meeting, they'll have them in stone. I don't know. That's right. So, um, <laughs> what happened with that? So, environmental monitor, a dewatering monitor. Dewatering monitor. Are we, we're going to have our person on site? Are they going to have their person on site? Who's measuring 40 yeah. NTU and, and how does it get reported to us? Uh, good question. So, so they're required to file a SWIP, right? Or, yeah. So yeah. that's part of, they have to do turbidity monitoring as part of that. So they should be submitting weekly reports, their monitor. As their good monitor? As, as good as Amazon was, Amazon was, I remember Louie and I walking in three feet of mud with their SWIP responsible party who didn't see the problem, but we were in mud. <laughs> Until we reminded him what his job was. He didn't warn you in advance to wear, to wear waiters. But in the, in the long run, that project came out fine. Um, I, th I think if we're going so far as saying we're going to be measuring it, we've got to really understand who's doing it and, and what action. You know, are we going to take their word for it? Um, could it be the town's resident engineer? If they're equipped to, I mean, are we doing an environmental monitor? Oh yeah, absolutely. So that should be our—that's our—that's their that's person our... who reports to us. 
That's what typically an environmental monitor is. It's their person. Their AI. person. Right. Well, um, well, who would you prefer? Would you prefer the resident engineer to do it, or? So resident engineer is working directly for the town on behalf of the town. Right. So if they have a concern, it should be their charge to be able to bring it to the, the contractors contractor's attention. Monitor. Okay. But I don't know how to. I don't know how we say that. Maybe we don't even need to say that in here, other than at that pre-construction meeting, as you're walking around and introducing each other, the resident engineer, you point to him and say, and you're the person who's going to be our eyes, eyes and, and ears, ears, eyes and ears to, you know, detect there's a problem or not. Yeah. Else. How did that happen? Why did that happen? That's really strange. You good, you, you good Joe? Let's see what happens. Let's move it. I move the uh, order as uh, drafted and amended. Second. Motion right. and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that is unanimous. Thank you. There is second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. That's unanimous. We stand adjourned. <laughs>